You get around to a lot of uh, livestock shows. How's Agribition stack up? Certainly as a beef show, it is the most powerful in the nation. The thing that, that strikes the most pride in me about Agribition is this agricultural marketplace. People feel like this is the one they have to be at. I think what makes it even better than a lot of other shows is that Agribition has always tried to treat everybody as if they're a guest in your house. Just good old Western hospitality, I guess. It's changed a lot over those years in terms of cost and size of the string and everything else that happens. It's the last show of the year and it's important that everybody's here to participate. What's different about Agribition is when you walk around the other shows, or whether it's in the US or some of the other countries, it's not the actual producers and family members that are raising the cattle that are actually there working on them. You know, the vast majority of the stalls that you stop at at Agribition, you know, the, the fella that, that owns the operation and, and raises those cattle, he's there working. He's in the wash rack or he's blowing them out. The producers are right there. Agribition is family and it's full of people who put in way more than they get out. We've had a lot of struggles here and things certainly haven't been easy every year, but it's just the resilience of agriculture and the people that make up agriculture that has got us to where we are today. When the times are tough, the tough get going. Usually we roll in here around 3.15 a.m. and we do that so that the cattle have time to eat their meal and really start to fill up and uh, give them some water and time to rest so that they look their best for show day. And then we basically wash them, groom them, get them ready, let them rest. As soon as the time allows, it's time to get down to the ring. These guys that are leading these cattle in right now, I mean, they've spent all week preparing for this day and every one of these animals that comes in the ring before they ever come to town, uh, we all think we have the champions and you get here and you compete and you find out uh, really how good you are or where you need to improve with different genetics. There's a lot of homework that gets done between halter breaking and your breeding decisions and feeding. Uh, I mean, it, it, this doesn't just happen overnight. so. There's a lot of work that gets done on every farm and ranch before you come to Regina. Champion female from Olds, Alberta. Female Remitol W Valley T45F. Exhibited by Remitol Hold River to Benante Highlands. couple cattle producers, one of them being Chris Souter, went to Denver Stock Show and he came back and said, we got to have something like this in Western Canada. It's a 20 day trip to the Royal and people need something out here. They decided that they should do something in Saskatchewan to have the East to come West and show them what our product, what Saskatchewan's product was and what Western Canada's product was. At that time, of course, they never thought of a worldwide event. It was a, a Western Canada event that they hoped to grow into a Canadian event. So he talked together and he gathered up people and you know the first of five original people for signing for Agribition was my dad, Barry Andrew, Gordon Hollinger, Bill Small, Ken Holliston, 
and of course Chris Suter. But there was many, many, many others in all the breeds that were involved to make this happen. I remember coming when I was a little girl showing Paul Herefords in the Great Big Stadium. I was probably 12 at the time, I think. It was always fun. We would always ride the Greyhound bus and meet, and Dad would pick us up at the Greyhound so we didn't miss so much school. And then kind of coming off and on for really my whole life. So my father, he exhibited cattle at the first exhibition, and at that time, he was a fitter, so he helped uh, other breeders prepare the cattle. As the years went on, he became a breeder and then a sale manager, so that agribition was very integral for him and his business, and, and he ran many of the sales uh, in subsequent years here at agribition. We started showing cattle in 77, yeah. We started with a, a market steer and a pen of uh, commercial calves. And uh, then from there on, the years after, we had steers and purebred cattle. My dad was involved in the original meetings with breeders from Saskatchewan here to uh, establish a show. We uh, participated in the first show, pretty basic back in them days, but we knew that a good thing has started and we've been here every year. I was cultivating on our farm in Milton in uh, I think about the 10th of October of that first year, 1971, and uh, Mark came out to the field and she said, the, the guy from Regina has phoned and you have to call him right back. And I phoned and it's Wes Cook and he's secretary of the Saskatchewan Angus Association. And he says, we're starting a new show this fall in Regina and it's called Agribition and we would like you to come and judge the Angus cattle at our first show. And uh, that's how I, I got to go to the first aggravation. I flew out in November for that year to judge the Angus cattle at that very first Canadian Western aggravation. So, Jordan's way for $500, $500. Aggravation's always been supported by the three levels of government. They, the feds and provincial and the city have all uh, chipped in very nicely to support us. and. And even back to the days of the very first show, the magical $10,000 that Premier Thatcher gave the group to, to go ahead and get the show going. Legend has it that first show, they put the call out. And the call that went out to those first exhibitors that were from the Stockman's part of the province in the Southwest was, we're doing this thing in Regina, you need to come to town and bring some panels to make this work. It wasn't, would you come? It's, you will come and you will bring this many panels. There was no template when they started and they grew it into the, the great show, as I say, that, that it is today. Of course, they didn't know what the numbers are gonna be like, whether it was commercial cattle or purebred cattle. Small town fairs would have 25 head, 100 head, and all of a sudden there's 2,500 head. People just couldn't wait for the next year to happen, and, uh, and it's been that way all along for 49 years. I still say we need an elevator, Gordy. Yep, we're gonna have to get one. <laughs> da -da, da -da, da -da. But these guys are doing a phenomenal job at keeping their alleys clean, their cattle are looking better every day. So I'm pretty proud of these boys and girls. We always come out through here, just check the manure bins, see how they are. Then we let the crew know if they need to come and push them up. Don't get your picture on here, eh? While we're going across here, we always check for ice if we need sand. Yeah. They got this under pretty nice under control yeah, now. Yeah, this is... That one day it was pretty ugly, but yeah. that was an ugly day anyways. That's what built Canadian Western Agribition was volunteers and, and the Barn Boss program alone is pretty unique to, to us. We, we started that program years and years ago. I was a Barn Boss here also in the mid 80s and 90s and that's where I started. And uh, it's, it's pretty important to uh, a show this size to have a breed that has somebody there that can handle all those little problems. It, each, each barn has their own problems, that guy will solve that problem. And then we meet every morning to discuss what's going on. And it's just a program that has worked very, very well for us. Good morning. 
How are you today? You're all ready for the big day? Yep. Uh, you're looking good. When you think of the really huge role volunteers have played in this show, it's unique here. It really is. And that was always something in all my years on the board and, and as president that, you know, look after the volunteers or we don't have a show. That was kind of always my, my mantra. And I think that still holds true today. I know any number of people that take holidays from their paid job to come and work at Agribition. That tells a pretty special story, I think, about what it's like to be here and be part of this show. See, you should have been wearing a belt one because your hair is wearing your number. So remember, you'll have to do a little of this, eh? Yeah. <laughs> All the volunteers are there to be a volunteer for a better recognition and not themselves. There's so many humble people making it happen in the background. It's an honor to be a volunteer. And anybody that is a volunteer there feels that way, and I think that's why it's such a successful program. But I wonder if there isn't that Saskatchewan volunteer flavor and the welcoming sort of, here we are, you know, the Texas of the prairies or whatever, you know, come on in, have a good time. started mainly because for livestock so the people could bring their animals to aggravation and compare with other people's animals and use it as a marketing tool for selling their product uh, and of course it expanded and, and it is now many other things besides just livestock. Now 70,000. 70,000 tell. Now 72,500. Right there. 72,500. Now 75. Yeah, 75,000. 75,000. 75. Now 77,500. Right there. 77,500. 97,500. Sold it to you. 95,000 on it. 95,000. Way up top. When I was president in 1978, we had a steer show at that time at Regina, and I thought, well, we've got to get this on a national basis and try and get some of these national grocery chains or someone like that to buy steers because at that time our steers were bringing $1.50 or $2 a pound. I approached Dominion stores and says, how come you guys don't come out to Canadian Western Aggravation? You always come to the Royal Winter Fair in Toronto and spend a lot of money on champion steers and so forth and get a big publicity. You'd get good publicity if you came to Regina. And, well, Regina is not Toronto. Well, I said, it's got a pretty big show out there now, and I think you should try and get out. Well, I finally decided to send out their head buyer. He went to the sale. And he spent $21 a pound for the champion steer. And he said, OK, John, how's that suit you? And I said, it suits me just fine. So that was when we were on the same footing with the Royal Winter Fair in Toronto as far as publicity. And it was a big national deal. Everything comes out of a need, and at that time our uh, entry numbers had dropped to about 1,700 head, and to where they had been at 2,400 at the peak. So we were starting to get a little nervous that our show was shrinking, and we were looking to find new things that would excite the people and get them there and keep our entries back where they were. One of my first projects here was to sit and take minutes for the beef focus group that was in the spring of 1999. Uh, led by Audrey Horkoff to develop something to bring life back into the beef industry. Four or five exhibitors and board members that got together one time and just uh, wanted to add something with a little more excitement to us here at Agribition. And a lot of people that put a lot into Agribition were at that meeting and, and used it as a little think tank, but we were kind of stalemated through the day and as things sometimes happen, the we got to the smarter part of the bottle a little bit later in the evening and some good ideas came out and from that the Supreme was born.
So Saturday night after we're done at four o'clock, we have our Supreme, which is a grand entry of all the champions, not only from Agribition, but from across Canada during that past year. Everybody wants to get to the Supreme because they are the best of the best, all the way down to the bottom. It is like the Grey Cup of the cattle showing world. It's kind of like the Olympics. It's kind of like, you know, the finale of what you worked for. We're, we're kind of like the World Series or the Super Bowl. It's the last show of the year. Everybody's coming, they got a champion in their pen, or they think they do anyway. And of course, it all winds up there at, at Agribition and where the good ones all meet. He just peeks underneath. Yeah. yeah. I've seen him do this shit before. He's good at it. 38. So hi. Now where the hell did she go? The show itself is a production show. Although it is a beef cattle show, it's an entertainment value as well. And there's a script behind it, there's rehearsals, there's production meetings leading up to it. There's the lights, there's the glamour, there's the speakers, there's the videos that we play. We want to make it an entertainment piece, not just uh, judging a cattle show. There's no seats left on Saturday and it is full. And it is full right to the very, very end. You can just sit there and listen to everybody's heart just pound. Everybody's so anxious. Champion female. Everybody wants to see who that champion of Canada is, not only Agribition, all across Canada. When the lights go off and then the spotlights come on and those champions are slapped, it's, I don't think there's anybody in the room. Even if you don't know what's happening, that doesn't go, wow, that's exciting. Agribition is really unique, you know, we've got the, the beef and the rodeo, but outside of that, um, there's such a variety of animals that people can come and see and do business with, or just get educated on. Nice and deep and slow, and just look at the little goats. Don't fall over. If your bunny feels like they're falling over, help them out, push against them a little bit. We did have an elk show. Exotics were kind of in the limelight. Bison were, were introduced. They're still here, of course. But you know, at one time, there was a, a really big swine show. That's an important piece of history that should never be lost. The swine show was Western Canada wide. A lot from Manitoba, lots from Alberta. There was always a sale. And everybody didn't like the smell of the pigs, but the kids loved the pigs. Because the show was built on beef. That continues to be the the jewel in the crown, but there have been a lot of other species here as well that, uh, you know, that did really well. I mean, we still got the sheep and the goats. It's all a part of the whole big show. In the past, we had a huge draft horse show that has now changed to, we have a draft horse display. We have some chore team and horse pull competitions on the light horse segment. That varies from year to year and what's popular and what's not. Right now we have mounted shooters, we have cattle dog competitions, stock dog competitions, and our horse sale is a very popular event as well. One event that preserves some of the old skills is the rodeo. Now, it may all seem like fun and games to those of us sitting in the safety of the stands, but for the cowboys involved, it's all a deadly serious business. Hey, Agribition, how you feeling tonight? Having the rodeo at Agribition is very important for the entertainment aspect. It holds tradition to agriculture and livestock while providing an entertainment piece. The people that come, the fans that come, enjoy it, whether they're a first-timer or they're a lifetime rodeo fan 
or sponsors. This young man was born and raised in Brazil. He just won the aggregate at the Canadian Finals Rodeo, and he is your champion from last night with an 84-point ride. Come on, Marcos, it's all yours. Aggribition was a world-class cattle show. It was ready for a world-class rodeo. And, and so we did a lot of work there to try to make the Agribition Rodeo the hottest ticket in town. The first year I walked into the rodeo on a Friday night and it was just electric. There was 6,310 people in that building and people were having a good time. People sitting in the stands, maybe they see it as an entertainment or as a night out, but for the contestants down there and the stock contractors, that's their livelihood and that's a competition. They're competing against each other and with their stock. It's a combination of a lot of things that really highlight that agribition is an intense competition for a week. Two lefts and a right. I want you to watch the horsemanship. Appreciate the time, the talent, the try to put these horses together. Number one's good. Number two, now of course, three, two, one. Yes, sir, the flag's down. 14 and the 367 puts her in the lead. The auditorium was one of a one of a kind building because it was so well laid out, and you could house an awful lot of people in there for sales. And it had a lot of mystique about it, and of course, uh, Regina Bull Sale was a very important event uh, held in Western Canada, just like the Calgary Bull Sale. People just loved it in there, and you could see there wasn't a seat where you couldn't see everything in there. And of course, off a great, great the Highland cow with the Tinkerville cow. The really neat thing about this guy is, of course, the full sister just happened to be reserve grand champion of the show yesterday for Pinnacles. He was boss from Greenwood there last summer. And the stadium was the main show ring, rodeo ground, too, also in there. The Winter Fair at that time was this the, the exhibition's exhibition because they didn't th they wanted that for attraction too. And then the, you know the annex, the uh, Harlan the Pasco barn were uh, for livestock. The Harlan barn was of course named after the Harlan family at Belle Plaine, uh, the longtime pro promoters and uh, in the pig business and uh, and shorthorn cattle at that time, and. Uh, they were very prominent, and, and Mr. Halton served in the board of uh, Regina Exhibition for years and years and years. And of course the swamp, we all know about the swamp, so that was uh, a program in itself. Oh, the swamp, it'll go down in history. It won't be forgotten very easily. And you know, it doesn't matter whether you're in Argentina, England, Australia, they all know about the swamp. Yeah, I was actually introduced to uh, some people on a veranda or a porch or a pretty fancy place in Brazil and, and he said aggribition. Oh, the swamp, he said. Well, it was under, underneath the seats where there was junk, but they would set a bar up and got selling beer in there and that's the way it got going. The swamp, of course, has uh, a lot of memories for a lot of people, especially of, of my, uh, my vintage. Lots of stories from the swamp, from uh, exhibitors bringing in their bulls to, I believe I heard a story one time about the champion poultry chicken ended up in the swamp. Leg wrestling, arm wrestling, standing room only, well actually sometimes not even standing room only, people would have to stand on tables to fit in there. You know, from uh, Jimmy Joe Henderson standing on his head drinking beer and, and things like that. Uh, I don't know anybody anywhere else that's done that. And Everyone to be inside the swamp. And I think the whole thing was anchored around legend that I'm not convinced ever really happened. I actually don't care. That was, that was a spot where everybody went just to, to visit and, and have a good time. And uh, lots of those stories will stay right in there. She's making some French fries at Agribition. Go figure.
Of course, as the show grew, we kept getting more entries from across Canada and uh, it made it difficult to house them all with the buildings we had at the time. There was lack of space. It eventually, after a few years, because it was a growing show and becoming more and more popular, it was very difficult to be accepted as an exhibitor or to even get your cattle in the competitions because there was such interest in becoming a part of Agribition. The first new barn was the Canada Centre and it was built, you know, in the early 80s. So uh, that was the first step. In Canada, west and east were just a, a breath of fresh air to the grounds. They were so very functional to the livestock industry and with their uh, drop down cords and, and electrical capacity that we had fought with in the other barns for so many years. The breakers would blow and uh, there was one in fact that uh, had a hockey stick taped to it. It went, it went on and off so many times. And when it blew, you just went over and flipped her with a hockey stick and on back at her. <laughs> and the other key thing was the wash rack. We'd always had cold water, ice cold water in the other racks. And we finally had a new boiler system that worked, although it had some days too <laughs> after it ran to capacity for, for more than 20 hours or so. Leaky roofs are a problem. So are the barn's electrical system. It can't handle these blowers. Somehow this show has always managed to adapt to the changing times and you know some of those times weren't weren't that easy and and there have been times when uh, you know there were other shows in other locations that they, they'd have gladly scooped aggravation. They wanted the show. We would hear rumors all the time about the possibility it was going to go to the Calgary Stampede or maybe the Edmonton Northlands. And people were saying, well, if they don't get new buildings in Regina, it's going to have to move. It's got so big and they can't handle them here and things like that. And we heard the rumors all the time. And the odd time there'd be something come out in the newspaper about the possibility it might move. You know, there was some exhibitors that were pretty disgruntled and, you know, you got to get this thing fixed or we're not gonna be here. And I mean, yeah, at the board, there was definitely talk of moving exhibition. And I was very, very much against that. You know, you might move the show, but you're not gonna move exhibition. This is exhibition, Regina, Saskatchewan. But it got darn tough for all of us to have that patience that we needed. And, and like I said, some didn't, especially if they're out of province. And, and we were at risk of losing popularity and importance went a little bit of a downturn and and the buildings were a part of that plus the you know the economy wasn't good cattle would get wet so you have these really valuable beef cattle that were not displayed in the best environment and some people really gave up on us you know money was scarce and we kept pushing and trying to keep the show rolling and we did the buildings became deteriorating the roofs were leaking um, we were out of room we had some old tin barns that the lighting wasn't good and the power wasn't good. We started pushing and pushing, and it was years of pushing for a new building. Regina's mayor was among those at today's media conference inside the old barns, where tarps hang to catch rain from a leaky old roof. For years, agribition officials complained about needing an upgrade. Well, I went on the board in 1996. I, as I said, I'd been working here prior to that. Even then, that's when the sort of crisis around buildings and infrastructure was really coming to a head. And I remember that being kind of foremost through all the years that I was on the board. Nineteen eighty nine to two thousand, that twelve year period, the average yearly deficit was twenty three thousand five hundred dollars. So we did not have much money to spend. It seemed like the weather didn't behave very well. We got blizzards and cold weather, which impact the show by less revenue at the gates, food liquor revenue, rodeo sales revenue. Some of the challenges that have happened over the years, of course, have been financial challenges and burdens that that puts on, on staff and board and even the exhibitors. I mean, you can't just keep increasing entry fees to, to get some money. So uh, th those were challenging days. 
when I came on, we were paying staff with an unsecured line of credit and it wasn't a very comfortable feeling for the board at that time. We did things on the expense side like freezing salaries, renewing contracts that had very little increase or none at all, asking to order less supplies and basically to do more with less. It seemed like every year after a deficit, we had to pull up our boots and make the show productive and profitable. But the key thing about whether we made money in aggravation or we lost money, the show still went on and people walking up and down those aisles didn't know the difference. For the most part, Canaan Western Aggravation is the biggest show of its kind in this country, and we were really strong from a brand perspective in agriculture, but the urban people that actually come and, and help fund the whole operation by showing up at our rodeos and through our education area and our First Nations Pavilion, all of that urban money was sitting right outside our door, but we had no strategy to go get that. That was always a challenge for us too. How do we make this where people fly into Regina and land at the airport and say, oh yeah, you know, this is the home of Agribition. I felt like we often had that challenge of reaching the urban audience. When I first came into the chair, we'd had a couple of bad years. Economically, things weren't going very good and the program was in a little bit of trouble. So my first year was the first year that Marty Seymour came on as CEO. We were both kind of new at that time. And I still remember Marty said to me, he says, what, what do I have to do? And I said, there's only two things you have to do. I said, you have to make money and we need new facilities. When I got hired by the board, probably the best kept secret was the financial state of the industry. I came into this thing thinking, man, I had this, this ace. Truly, I was in way over my head. And I showed up and on week three, I realized that we weren't gonna make payroll. The show was not doing well financially. And so when you come in brand new and don't know what you're doing with such succinct, clear goals, it was pretty easy to get things steered in the right direction. It took us a long time to get everybody on board, including ever as the city, the governments, the federal and provincial, and, and they all had to come into, into line at one time. And it was a long process. And that took the management, it took board members to express the importance of this uh, facility and, and what it would do to Regina and to Agribition. We had really good people. Without that, I'm, I'm not so sure we'd be here. We had to ask ourselves, why are we doing what we're doing the way we're doing it? Can we do it easier, more efficient? And every line we evaluated, and I was totally amazed at the efficiencies and the new revenue streams that we came up with. Everybody bought into this, the board, staff. We always wanted the building, but it seemed like it was just never gonna happen. It was gonna be a dream in the future. They're talking about the tarps and dripping on and how, how uh, unimpressive that was. Like I said, we're bringing world-class genetics to a third world building. Now, Ottawa and the province have committed $22 million to build the International Trade Centre. So with that, we were on the road to uh, getting the building, but it was key that Agribition put a million dollars into it. Uh, which is remarkable in that we're just a tenant here. But that was the, the skin in the game that we provided that helped to leverage the whole process. And what makes it even more remarkable was that we had it in cash, okay? And that came after about eight years prior, pretty well, you know, we were, we were broke as an organization. Maybe some people didn't think it could happen, but uh, Agribition has a way of making things happen and I signed a check on behalf of Agribition and all those exhibitors that gave us patience for the new building process. It was a, a pretty proud moment to, to sign that and then to present it to Everest, to, to Mark Allen, and uh, that was my highlight as, as being president, I'd say. It was a nervous time. The exhibitors all went home on Sunday and Monday morning the record ball was here knocking down buildings and uh, everybody held their breath that we would have enough buildings built for us to, to go again in the fall. 
There was a lot of nostalgia, especially with the auditorium. I mean, I even I thought, oh God, don't tear that one down. It was the red seats, steep seating, packed full of people that were really celebrating the core of this industry, which is the auction of what's going on. That just left us all with just a little bit of hole in our heart about, oh man, that was such a legacy place and I have such good memories. But it didn't compare to what happened when we tore down the stadium which was the year following. That's the Super Bowl of cattle shows. And there was a lot of farms made their brand winning in that arena. That changed people's lives. You know, a couple days before everybody started arriving to tie in, we would have these, you know, emergency meetings in these various buildings about, well, since we knocked this wall down, we can't run a water line here or the power's not gonna work here. and. How are we going to move animals in this building and out of here? And the marshalling area is way too small. So we would have these really intense emergency meetings about making sure the show could still run in a safe manner, uh, in a way that, that people expected it to. But we were solving problems that we didn't even know existed on a day-to-day -day basis there. It was exciting to get it built, but I, I knew there was going to be some challenges. The flooring is smooth. What are we going to do with that? So I did spend a lot of time on the phone trying to source out what kind of flooring we would get. So we ended up ordering some matting from Ontario and thinking it was going to work, but it didn't get here like quite soon enough to be able to test it all. We couldn't get it to lay flat, so I went to the uh, carpet stores and I tried the two-way carpet tape. They said, oh, this will work. Sorry to say that didn't work. So then I tried duct tape and they said, well, we don't want a bunch of gray duct tape on the floor. We want something that'll match. So I started looking and then somebody said, have you ever tried Gorilla Tape? So the crew and Ken went on a mission buying out Regina of Gorilla Tape that year. I drove to every Walmart, every home hardware, every PV Mart, uh, Princess Auto. They said, what are you doing today, Ken? Going for more, looking for more Gorilla Tape. Once the show was over, I went, okay, yeah, now we can move on. I'm glad the building's here. Things are working. You know, the story of how the International Trade Centre got built and how important it was to not only Agrovision but the city as a whole is really a story about partnership on an unprecedented level. You had all three levels of government, but you also had private investment, not only from Agrovision but the Regina Hotels Association, which as a group has supported Agrovision in this city for decades. But we've proven in the past that we can take on problems that we think might be too big for us to solve, and we always manage it with help from all of our friends. Six is entry number 2213, Crescent Creek Alternative 21G, sold by Crescent Creek Angus. They got that rib shape, I like, structurally sound, they got some length. Oh. <laughs> Everything has changed. The facilities have been really upgraded. So that's a you know a big help for all us producers to showcase our cattle. You know, the the investment that's taken place in, in the infrastructure to hold a show of this magnitude, it's helped us a lot. We finally got uh, world-class facilities here. We had to put up with older buildings for a number of years, but the atmosphere is what's made this show. And it's known around the world now as one of the great livestock shows in the world. Here we go. Thanks, Kelly. Like you said, my name is Wade Leish. It is a pleasure to be here. I absolutely enjoy every time I get to visit Canada and how friendly everybody is. And I can't say how impressive this aggravation is. I can't believe it. It's honestly, I could never have dreamed that they would end up with what's here now. It's fantastic. As a former president who lived through the challenges of the infrastructure and water dripping on the heads of the Grand Champion Bulls and, you know, those sort of fun things, to come here now and see what they've what the result has been of all the hard work that many people have put in over all those decades. It's really gratifying. Then we'll, we'll talk to Phil from BC. Good morning. Good morning. From BC. Carry on. How about you? This guy is in the chore team and his son always seems to get a jump on him. Good morning. Good morning, how are you this morning? Good, how are you? Good, good, good night. Yep, this old timer's been here for years in the chore team competition. It's special to different people for different reasons uh, and, and have to keep evolving. You know, we added motocross in 2019. 
because we need to have a little bit of flavor. We've done running with the bulls and, and jousting, and, and that's how you keep that broader base of acceptance, especially in the local community. Without the rodeo and the trade show and every other little component that we add into it, it wouldn't be what it is. The show has changed a bit, and that's a good thing because now there's a lot more exhibits that uh, appeal to a wider range of people. It's such a tremendous atmosphere for reconnecting with customers old and new. Agribition seems to be that one time of the year where everybody comes to town. So you, you see friends and faces that sometimes you only get to see once a year. These things don't happen without sponsors. You need sponsors to make the events go, and these are our people, these are our customers, so uh, we need to support them back. And it's a business development that we help Agribition succeed, they help us succeed. One of the things that keeps us coming back is just the knowledge that we're helping to educate the people from the urban centers and also helping to encourage the rural people to become involved in agriculture and choose that as their life's work. It surprises me sometimes where a lot of people don't know where their food comes from. Uh, you know, I, I grew up in a farm, it's all I ever knew was food, and uh, probably over the years I've realized that, that the urban people need to be a little bit educated on, on where it comes from, how it's produced, and how well we do those things in this business. That's a huge part of what we do here is education. So many of those children that come on the buses, and if there was 10,000 last year, that's, you know, 10,000 we didn't used to have way back when. And these kids, of course, some of them have never seen a cow, let alone been up close to it. And they have the milking displays that they have there uh, two or three times a day. Uh, the kids can stand there and watch to see where their milk comes from, for, as an example. And it's, uh, it's so important. What's important about the 10,000 kids is all their parents are going to hear about that when the kids go home. And then the parents are going to maybe think, well, maybe we should go and see this show. It's important uh, where our food comes from, uh, how these uh, animals are treated and raised. For me personally, and I have it high on my agenda, is to educate these kids that are coming through this these barns at, at showtime. Last show, we had just over 10,000 kids here. Plan to build on that every year, and I don't know how many we could ever end up with in the end, but we certainly don't want that to slip away. One out of seven Canadians is sustained in agriculture from the farm gate to the consumer's plate. That story is not told enough in Canada, and agribition is an important part of telling that story. The show is certainly the uh, premier show in Canada, in fact, maybe in North America. It certainly rivals Denver in, in its uh, size and quality of cattle. But in terms of uh, the city of Regina, it fills the hotels, fills the restaurants, even spills over to the neighboring cities. Uh, and for the cattle industry, the cattle producer, it's one of the best shows in the world right at home. Or you see the trucks from Ontario or, or BC and, and they're there each and every year. But at the end of the day, you know, the business relationships we've had with our commercial customers that, you know, we first met here. They might have been coming down to just go through the trade show or the rodeo at, at some time and they walked through the cattle stalls and they liked what we had and they purchased some genetics and we've become friends and in a business relationship for a long time. It's a really good way to have urban and rural meet together and find out really where your food comes from so important to know where does it start and the I guess the passion behind your food is right here in this building. All of these things are active conversations that Agribition has grown into. We've matured into that. Not only now are we a showcase for what exists but we're an advocate for what can be. 
I've stayed here for so long because uh, it's in my blood. It's, this is like an, uh, my second family to me. When I come to work here, I love doing it. I love the job. I love the people that I work with. I mean, I've got some of the best guys to work with and the staff up here is phenomenal to work with. I would be lying if I didn't say I love aggravation because I love to go in there every day uh, to see the show and to meet the people, whether you're in livestock or trade or international business, 4-H, school, it's a, it's, a, it's a people show. That's what it's all about. To have this kind of a, a wildly successful marketplace, you know, in the middle of the bald prairies and, and say this was a grassroots show uh, driven by volunteers who said, we're tired of taking the train to Toronto, let's, let's do our own show. In a time when we know it's gonna be so cold you can hardly survive. <laughs> and 50 years later or nearly that, to, uh, to still have people coming here because they're achieving their business goals, that to me is, is really the most important and the thing that, that gives me the most pride about this show. It's special to different people for different reasons. You know, we have friends that we see here once a year or a week, and we might only see them two or three times. We share so much that's common between each other that that's the bond that, that we've created. We all like agriculture. We're, we're subject to Mother Nature, and I think that makes us strong. <laughs> I know it makes us strong and Agribition will be bigger and better in 50 years, it'll just be 50 shows, that's all. I've had such a great time here. It's funny, every step that I went along the way, I, I enjoyed. There isn't one part of it that I never enjoyed, and naturally, I, I don't think I'd be here if I didn't enjoy it, so. I'm getting up in years, so I'm gonna have one more good one on the 50th, and then we'll see what happens, but I, I've enjoyed them all, I really have. In terms of our family, uh, there's probably been lots of honey-do lists and lots of bills to pay, but we always got to aggravation and uh, took our cattle and loved to compete. Loved to see the different cattle and the different breeds and within our breed and, and the people. Meeting the people was just outstanding. It's my dream job. It still is my dream job after 23 shows. I never get tired of waking up and coming to work. These original founding members they would have nothing but praise for everybody else that's doing it. They wouldn't want the pat on the back. Even though they did all the dirty work and the groundwork and fought for everything they got, they did it for the province, they did it for Canada, and they did it for the cattle industry. I know they're smiling every time we have a good show, which is always. They just think, you know, I was a part of that. <laughs>